Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A quick reminder of our top stories now. Supreme Court affirms Adeboyega Oyetola as the duly elected governor in the September 2018 Oshun State Governorship election. Governor Oyetola applauds Supreme Court judgment upholding his election as his rival in the election. PDP's Ademola Deleke congratulates him on his victory. Court orders temporary forfeiture of $40 million worth of jewellery belonging to former Minister of Petroleum Resources, Deziani Alison Madweke. And peace deal at last in Sudan as ruling military council and a coalition of opposition groups agree to share power for three years before elections. For more information on our top stories and others, please visit our website, it's channelstv.com. Do subscribe and watch Channels Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. Or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from your respective stores. Besides giving you access to news and updates on the go, the Channels TV and Channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. Just install the app and tap and swipe to reveal the menu and follow the instructions. Let's now get some more perspectives on the judgment delivered today by the Supreme Court on the Oshun State Governorship Elections. And joining us live from our Abuja studios is a senior advocate of Nigeria and vice chancellor of Bayes University in the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja, Professor Tahir Mambo. I want to thank you so much indeed for joining us tonight on the News at 10. Now, this legal tussle, uh, all over and done thank with you. the elections, also uh, done with. How did you receive? the news of the judgment by the nation's highest court? Well, with some relief, certainly uh, when these cases uh, take their route from the trial to the appeal stage, uh, it, it has a way of affecting administration the, uh, in the states and the, the jurisdictions affected by those contests. So it must have come as a great relief to the people of Ocean State. And, um, and then in the case of Heineck, obviously it's one, they would tick off one of their 700, or probably 701 cases, uh, because from the report they gave, uh, there are about 700 uh, petitions which they are grappling with, arising from the last elections, and then about 800 different ones from the pre election cases. So uh, we are actually besieged as a country by politicians who are impatient with processes and uh, procedures and people who want to cut corners. And then, of course, for the Supreme Court, uh, handling so much, with so much uh, in their docket uh, over the same problem that we're talking about. So it's a relief to everybody. And uh, I want to commend, actually, the attitude of uh, uh, Senator Adeleke, who, uh, who is very conciliatory and congratulated uh, Governor Oyetola, which is, which is the way a politician should be behaving. And then uh, on core legal prostitution, actually, uh, it's not quite a surprise because much of it depends on or rested on well-established uh, principles of law uh, in terms of uh, you know regularity and uh, stability in panels of uh, in panels when they are sitting and um, of course again indirectly although it didn't come out uh, directly from the judgment even annex two to some extent will be relieved because uh, it's the kind of affirmation of its um, principle of margin of lead, which is there in the regulations and uh, indirectly in the Electoral Act. So it has clarified uh, quite a number of things related to uh, election petition cases. If, if I may and, jump uh, in, if, if I may so jump in here, to everybody. my apologies, if I may just uh, uh, jump in here, what do you make of the minority judgment, particularly regarding the announcement of the election in conclusive which the two justices considered illegal and that it gives room for manipulation of polls. 
Well, as you can imagine, just for the Supreme Court, and obviously Court of Appeal, where you have panels sitting, are fiercely independent. So each judge or justice is entitled to uh, look at things differently, and that's what those two justices have looked at. Uh, the only thing probably to note is um, the reason they are anchoring their decisions on, uh, they go, some of them go against uh, previous decisions of, of even the Supreme Court on the issues at stake. And, um, and then with respect, you also find some imputation of certain motives to INEC officials, which to me didn't have to... Uh, to, to, to be a reason really to anchor their judgment. But otherwise, really, these are gentlemen who are time-tested and they're entitled to take those, uh, those views. And they enrich actually our jurisprudence with those positions, particularly if they are well argued out and based on very sound principles of law. Are there lessons to be learned by the electoral empire, INEC? Yes. Uh, well, the main, really, people who should be learning more lessons is even the politicians, not, not just the INEC. Uh, INEC is a respondent in all these cases. It doesn't initiate petitions, except to the extent that uh, it has to do its work properly and um, ensure that every step it takes is guided by basic principles of, of law, the Electoral Act, and the Constitution. Uh, much of what has happened rested the controversies on uh, all those uh, inconclusive elections, which lawyers and judges have had various views on it, and even members of the public. But uh, it is there in the regulations, and it is a way of discovering, actually, the, 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 the opinion of the electorate, the decision of the electorate, uh, and then it's a solution to our own peculiarity as a country in terms of the attitude of politicians and then even the, the voters, really, who want to always want to cut short court uh, in uh, elections. So uh, in determining who wins at elections, uh, INEC has tried everything possible to ensure that the votes of every uh, voter counts, and this is what has led to all this. So the main lesson for everybody is for us to really uh, do things fairly and uh, transparently. This is the key thing. If transparency is the watchword, um, there will be less contest, there will be less resort to litigation by politicians, and we hope um, more confidence in the uh, electoral system and uh, elections, generally speaking. We well, must thank you so much indeed for talking to us, the senior advocate of Nigeria and indeed the vice chancellor of Bayes University, Professor uh, Tahir Mamba. Many thanks indeed for talking to us. Is President Muhammad Buhari reacting to pressure? Well, that probably is the situation as the president has announced the reappointment of Mr. Boss Mustafa as the secretary to the government of the federation and Abakari as the chief of staff today. The president's decision is coming less than 24 hours after the coalition of United Political Parties, the CUPP, initiated a suit seeking to stop Mr. Kerry and Mustafa from retaining their offices without the president officially announcing their reappointment. The announcement is contained in a statement by the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Garba Shehu, and it says that the appointment takes effect from May the 29th. Mr. Kiari has been the president's chief of staff since he assumed office in 2015, while Mr. Boss Mustafa was first appointed secretary to the government of the federation in 2017. The president also announced the appointments of 11 other personal staff, including Bayo Omoboriowo, as the presidential photographer, and Sonde Akhezi as the state photographer. The African Union Summit will hold on Sunday, July the 7th, and President Muhammad Buhari will be attending. He will depart the nation's capital, Abuja, tomorrow for Niemey, the capital of Niger Republic, for the summit. At the event, the president will participate in the 12th extraordinary session of the Assembly of the Union of African Continental Free Trade Area, and the first media coordination meeting of the AU and the regional economic communities. 
A statement from the President's Special Advisor on Media and Publicity, Femi Adesino, says that the extraordinary session of the Assembly of the Union is expected to launch the operational instruments of the agreement establishing the Assembly of the Union on African Continental Free Trade Area. President Buhari will be accompanied to Niemi by the First Lady, uh, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, as well as the governors of Borno, Kebi and Katsina states, among other top government officials. The President will return to Abuja at the conclusion of the summit. You're watching the news at 10, reaching you live from Lagos. Let's quickly switch over to our Abuja studios now, where Ibrahim Adra is standing by to take us through a couple of more stories. Ibrahim, good yes. to see you. Yes, Gimba, let's talk some more politics. The National Working Committee of the People's Democratic Party, that's the PDP, has suspended the minority leader of the House of Representatives, Ndudi Lumelu, and six others over the role they played in the selection of minority leaders for the House. According to the party, the suspension is to last for one month, as it insists that the action of the affected lawmakers is that of insubordination. Other lawmakers suspended are Honorable Wale Oke, Linda Ekwazu, Anayo Edwin, Gideon Gwadi, Toby Okechuku, and Honorable Adekoya Abdumajid. The lawmakers had been summoned to the NWC meeting to explain the roles they played in the selection of minority leaders of the House. When the Speaker, Femi Bajabi Amila, refused to read the list sent to the House by the PDP, but read another of which was submitted by all minority political parties in the House. The PDP had nominated Honorable Kingsley Chinda, as the House Minority Leader. Well, meanwhile, the Minority Leader of the House, Honorable Ndudi Lumelu, says he is surprised and shocked that the National Working Committee of the PDP can sit and take a decision without giving room for fair hearing. He explains that he left Abuja immediately after plenary on Thursday and traveled to Delta State after he lost his aunt. He says he asked his special assistant to write to the party and request a new date since he was unavoidably absent. He asked that his respect for the party is not in doubt and that he is ready to serve. Honorable Waleoke from Ocean State on his part describes the decision of the party as unfortunate as he concludes that the party has only suspended its most loyal members for towing the path of honor and constitutionalism. A federal capital territory police command has granted bail to Senator Elisha Abo for, after detaining him, that is, for 24 hours. FCT Police Public Relations Officer DSP Anjuguri Manza, who confirmed the release of the embattled senator, says he is expected to return to the command next week for further questioning. DSP Manza confirmed that Senator Abo was released after meeting certain conditions which he declined to disclose. Senator Abo had visited the command on Thursday in response to police summons and was taken into custody as part of investigation into the incident. It was seen in a viral video beating a nursing mother at a store in the nation's capital, Abuja. We'll take a break now. OPEC oil output hits new five-year low in June. Impact of U.S. sanctions and supply cut agreement. That will be on Business News and later from our London Bureau. Sudan's military and opposition coalition agree power sharing deal ahead of elections. That will be when we bring you around the world in five. Do join us again.